Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Tim Christopher heats his home near Decorah, Iowa, with wood he harvests from his land. In preparation for winter, he fills his wraparound porch with firewood. By spring, most of that wood is gone, and so he goes out to bring more home. That gives Tim an opportunity to invite friends to come with their teams and spend a day skidding logs. Some are experienced working with their animals in the woods. For others, it's a rare opportunity to check an item off their bucket list. A number of animal breeds and logging arches were in use. There were Belgian draft horses, mules, donkeys, and a team of halflingers. They were put to a couple of pioneer logging arches that had been modified by Tim in the past. An arch custom built by Bob Erickson we've shown before on this program that carries the log slung entirely off the ground. A forecart that really wasn't designed to skid logs, and a design shown here where the log is hooked to a solid iron pipe that angles up toward the back of the vehicle so that when it goes forward on level ground or an upward slope, it lifts the front off the ground. This design is still a work in progress, but Tim was pleased with how it performed. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's Rural Yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each or you can buy two for $44.95 or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. Hits the floor. Straight back there. 
Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. You can shove this down through here, like this, yep. and it's a grab hook. Right. You can adjust it for grabbing. Right. And if you put this part down here, and throw it down through here, it's a clip hook. Put this here over the end of the... Playing tricks on me here. <laughs> ah. And this here would be a slip hook. Right. Right. So it's a, it's a double, you can use it either way. But it's called a keyhole. Okay. <laughs> back a step. Back a step. Back easy. Back. Feeling good. Feeling good. Back. Back. Boom. Mm. Perfect, man. Okay, that's some firewood. Yeah. 
right here. Is really good. At least all these are in pro style. I just thought I had it. Hey, show me that again. Show me that. What you just said. Well, this is a grab hook, and this yep. is a grab hook. Yep. And if you don't have a, a, a slip hook, just come around the chain and hook it in itself, and that creates a, a Honda for it to slip. Okay, Kenny. 
I mean, how much wood do you burn a year in a cold year? I fill my porch up. Yeah. And that, and this year I didn't even fill it up. Okay. I bought a brand new cook stove, brand new, brand new, made in Canada, and they. I never even, uh, that big round oak pot belly sofa guy never started this year. Wow. Whoa. You gotta have pine on there because we break a lot of shit. Who made this? I did. Did you really? really? I've never seen one like it. I haven't either. To stop it, yeah. I know. But that doesn't really pass. I can change that perfect pretty quick without trying. Alright. No. Stand off the side here and watch this thing. Right. right. I can see what it's going to do. That's awesome. Okay, Kenny. Nah. Is that a solid pipe? Is that solid iron? Yeah. Yeah. But it saves you, Jack, and... Well, yeah, that's great. It's just an eight-footer, but it works. And then when you go over down the hill, and the log don't pull as hard, the log slides down the thing and creates a drag, so that, you know what I mean? You bet, yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, I don't know, I like it. Yeah, it's terrific. Bob Erickson. <laughs> if he went to college, he'd be, he'd be at NASA. Right. He'd be building rockets. Hi, I'm Bob Crager. I'm the author of the book, Historic Barns of Ohio, and I hope you enjoy these amazing barn stories. These stories in Ross County, I call it yesterday, Marvelous Maxwell, and it's on Sunshine Hill Farm. And it is a round barn. It's not square, not rectangular, it's round. So we'll talk about that because that's an unusual shape for a barn. And many people have never seen such, such an unusual barn. But if you drive down Route 180, and as you come over a hillside, all of a sudden you see this bright red beacon. It just catches you for almost a mile away. It's wonderful. Uh, when I visited, it just been painted red, so it's very, very bright. Well maintained, and it's owned by Chip Maxwell. Now, Chip's great-grandfather, Robert Maxwell, built this bar in 1910 on his 500 acre farm. And he farmed for a long time. 
eventually uh, he passed away. And so the farmland got split up between the siblings and Chip was the lucky one to get this, get this wonderful barn. And if you look at the photo, you'll see an internal wooden silo with the owners next to it. It goes up right in the middle of the barn, all the way to the very, very top. Very unusual. Well, Chip uh, wanted to save the barn and it had a few problems. It needed, it needed some help, foundation, some siding. So he decided that he was going to save it. He told me, when I got on my deathbed, I want to have the feeling that I have saved this barn. He doesn't want me to tell you how much money he put into it, but it was a big, big chunk. And that's rare for a private owner to do that, especially when a barn doesn't have any real practical purpose. Now, this one may have a new purpose because his daughter um, is interested in repurposing it into an event center. As many as many barns have been, have been repurposed into where they hold weddings and reunions and things like that. So that's her plan. Her husband owns a restaurant in Chillicothe, so maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Um, but the interesting thing about the round barn is that there aren't many of them. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe two dozen in Ohio. They're more common in Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin. And it traces back to a octagonal shape and a fellow who wrote a book on that in the 1850s in New York State. And then another New Yorker, about 1875, Elliot Stewart, after his three rectangular barns burned down, thought that uh, this octagonal shape might take. So he started the octagonal barn craze. That took off a little bit, not a lot. There are some in Ohio. But then Professor Franklin King of the University of Wisconsin decided to build a round barn for his brother-in-law. And he was associated with the extension. And he also publicized this round barn concept, saying that it was more practical, especially for dairy farming, when you could have all the cows lined up in a circle around the central park and it was much more efficient and it was much less expensive to build. Well, it really wasn't, but, but that, was, that was the thought. And even then, in the 1890s, 1900s, 1910s, when the round barn craze was pretty big, less than 1% of all barns were built in that shape. So it's very unusual. You don't see many of them. Very few people have seen them, but it's an interesting part of early Americana. The rural American countryside is still filled with historic old barns built a century or more ago, but they won't be standing forever. To commemorate and capture the images and stories of the old barns, Ohio native Bob Kruger began painting and writing their histories, and that's all come together in a new book called Historic Barns of Ohio. You can get your copy by calling 877-647-2452 or visiting ruralheritage.com. It costs just $23.99 plus $7 shipping. Call 877-647-2452. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.